Hello, my name is Owen, and I'm going to show you the process of making a digital design and then fabricating it on a CNC mill. I'll use Fusion 360 to design a dog bone tensile test sample, and I'll use the other mill to mill it out of aluminum. I'll start with CAD, where I design the object, then CAM, where I create a toolpath for the machine to follow, and then milling, where I physically manufacture the part. These are all very deep subjects, so my goal is just to show you how these steps go together. To get an in-depth understanding, I recommend going through Autodesk's Fusion 360 tutorials and other machine companies' website. Ready? Let's get started. First, I'll do the design, or CAD, in Fusion 360. A dog bone tensile test sample needs to have wide ends and a narrow midsection. That way the test machine's clamps can securely grab the ends and the stress will be concentrated in the middle. I'll start by making a sketch of the shape. A sketch is a 2D outline that's the basis for creating all kinds of 3D geometry. Great, so there's the sketch of my dog bone. Now I'll create 3D geometry by doing an extrusion. I'll make it an eighth of an inch thick because that's a common thickness when you buy aluminum. There, we've designed our dog bone as a 3D shape. Very simple, looks great. Next, we'll do CAM, where we generate tool paths for the machine to follow. The CAM workspace is where you decide how you're going to machine your part, and where you create tool paths that the machine will use to mill it. First, I'll create a new setup, which describes how a model will be oriented and positioned in space. The parameters here have to match the physical world. In the setup, I'll select our dog bone as the model, then I'll choose the origin for the setup, which needs to match the origin in other plan. The origin in other plan is the lower left corner of the bed at the top of the material. This yellow box around the dog bone represents the stock, which is the piece of material you'll be milling your design from. I have a piece of eighth inch aluminum from our store that's about four by four inches, so I'll change the dimensions here to match it. I'll also set the model position to the left side, slightly away from the edge, to make sure I mill all four sides. This is important because the pre-cut edges of any stock are usually not very precise. Now I'll choose a toolpath. I need to cut around the outside of the model, so I'll use a 2D contour toolpath. I'll choose a 1 8 inch flat end mill, which is great for milling aluminum. This tool is from the other mill Fusion 360 tool library, which you can download from our website. Now I'll set the cutting parameters, or feeds and speeds, to have a high cutting feed rate. To choose which geometry to mill, I'll select the outer contour of the model. In the Passes tab, I'll turn on multiple depths so the machine doesn't try to mill through the entire thing in one pass, and I'll set the maximum step down to two thousandths of an inch, which is how deep the tool will mill on each pass. I'll click OK, and Fusion 360 will generate the toolpath. It looks like one solid blue ribbon, but if I zoom in, you can see that it's actually made up of lots of tiny lines. Each one of those lines is one pass around the perimeter, two thousandths of an inch deep. It looks like a huge number of passes, but our high feed rate means it will go through them quickly. Now that the toolpath is done, let's simulate it to make sure it will come out like we expect. Great, that's exactly what we want. Now I'll post-process the toolpath to export a G-code file that OtherPlan can read. I'll open the post-process dialog, choose the other mill post-processor, and save my file, which OtherPlan will then use to mill the design. That's it. We did the 3D design in the last step, and in this step, we just finished creating a toolpath and exporting it as a G-code file that OtherPlan can read. Next, we'll mill it on the other mill. The first thing I'll do is attach the material to the bed. I'm using a high strength fixturing tape called Nitto Permacel PO2 tape. Fixturing is very important because you don't want the material to come loose from the bed while you're milling it. Now in other plan, I'll set up my material, which is a four x four by one eighth inch piece of aluminum. Now I'll import the G-code file I exported from Fusion 360, and I'll choose the tool I used when I generated the toolpath, which was a one eighth inch flat end mill. We're ready to start milling.
Awesome! This dog bone milled in about eight and a half minutes, and that concludes our process. To recap, we began by designing a 3D CAD model. Then we did CAM and generated a tool path for the machine to follow. Then we milled the design on the other mill. Hopefully this gives you an idea of the process of milling physical objects from digital designs. Just for fun, let's actually use the dog bone for its intended purpose and test it in a tensile test machine. Pretty cool. As always, feel free to visit our website or email us if you have any questions. Happy milling.